The Australia, the United States and the United Kingdom have agreed to join forces in building a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines for Australia, using technology provided by the United States and the United Kingdom. Australia is joining a new Indo-Pacific security partnership with the United States and United Kingdom that will allow it to acquire nuclear-powered submarines, sparking a rift with France at a time when the Biden administration is pushing allies to counter Chinese assertiveness. But the French are not impressed, France has accused Australia of a stab in the back after they scrapped plans to buy £43 billion worth of conventional French diesel electric submarines. In a joint statement, Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian said France could only observe and regret as the deal was scrapped, and Armed Forces Minister Florence Parley accused the United States, in facilitating a defence pact with Canberra, of excluding a European ally in the effort to bring stability to the region. A UK-US, or AUKUS, is a trilateral security pact between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States for the Indo-Pacific region. Under the pact, the US and the UK will help Australia to acquire nuclear-powered submarines. The new Indo-Pacific AUKUS pact will see the three nations defend our shared interests in the region and bring us closer than ever, in terms of security, technologies and advances being made in defence-related science. The United Kingdom and United States offered to provide Australia with the technology needed to build nuclear reactors for its future submarines as part of their AUKUS security partnership, Australian leaders almost assuredly saw it as an opportunity to acquire the submarines that they always wanted at a unit cost possibly lower than that of the troubled diesel-electric submarine program. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the defence partnership would also drive jobs and prosperity for all those involved, including back in the United Kingdom. AUKUS will cover artificial intelligence and other technologies and will focus on military capability, rather than intelligence, which is covered by the Five Eyes Alliance, that also includes Canada and New Zealand. AUKUS will also provide Australia with nuclear-powered submarines that will give its navy the ability to operate undetected for longer periods underwater. And with Beijing expanding its military, surface fleet and aircraft, plus becoming ever more protective of the South China Sea, the move will help keep the Far East nation in check. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, the United States President Joe Biden and the United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced the security partnership in a virtual meeting. France said the move halted a 2016 deal with French military shipbuilder Naval Group to build up to 12 submarines, a project that had blown out to an estimated £48 billion. In a press briefing, Morrison defended the decision and said he understands it's disappointing for France. Touting a forever partnership with the United States and United Kingdom, he said would take as many as 18 months to work out details of the agreement before work on the subs begins. As a Prime Minister I must make decisions that are in Australia national security, Morrison said. I know that France would do the same. The first major initiative will be to deliver a nuclear-powered submarine fleet for Australia, Morrison said, who said the vessels would be built in his country. Over the next 18 months we will work together to seek the best way forward to achieve this. The decision to scrap the program was contrary to the letter and spirit of the cooperation that prevailed between France and Australia and shows a lack of coherence, France Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs Jean-Yves Le Drian and Armed Forces Minister Florence Parley said in statement. The regrettable decision that has just been announced regarding the full-service partnership program only reinforces the need to make the issue of European strategic autonomy loud and clear, the French ministers said. There is no other credible way to defend our interests and our values in the world, including in the Indo-Pacific. For Australia, the importance of its future submarines is difficult to overstate. They will not just replace its existing Collins-class diesel-electric attack submarines, but also almost certainly be Australia frontline forces in any future naval conflict. Considering the vulnerability of surface warships to the combination of increasingly pervasive sensors and accurate guided missiles. While the precise requirements for Australia future submarine fleet will remain classified for years to come, one can glean from the comments of Australian legislators their broad strokes. The requirements appeared to have centred on three key features, power, range and speed. Building nuclear-powered submarines will still be a challenge for Australia, but the ease with which Canberra made the switch was impressive. Surely, some level of agreement between Australia two major political parties was important. The advocacy of Tony Abbott, a Labour Party leader, for nuclear-powered submarines over the last four years likely helped lay the groundwork for Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison the head of the ruling Liberal National Coalition, to act as quickly as he did without major parliamentary opposition.
No doubt, nuclear-powered attack submarines will once and for all satisfy the Australian Navy requirements for its future submarine fleet, requirements that were crafted to meet the practical needs of defending a continental country in an age of ever longer range guided weapons. If all eight nuclear-powered attack submarines that have been mentioned are built in the late 2030s, they will enable Australia to maintain a continuous presence in the waters off its northern coasts as well as give Australian leaders a much wider range of options in responding to possible future crises, even on short notice. The operational advantages of nuclear-powered submarines have long been clear. The biggest one is probably their unlimited range. They never have to be refueled during their 30-year to 40-year service life. Another advantage is their ability to stealthily sail at high speeds, rapidly reaching trouble spots. A nuclear-powered submarine can transit from Australia Stirling Naval Base, rumoured to be the home port for Australia future submarine fleet, to Darwin in 3.1 days at an average speed of 30 knots. Even the most advanced diesel-electric submarine would require at least 7.2 days at an average speed of 13 knots to traverse the same distance, and it would have to repeatedly surface to recharge its batteries. Moreover, once a nuclear-powered submarine arrives on station, it can patrol far longer than its diesel-electric counterpart, especially in distant waters. If patrolling the South China Sea, a nuclear-powered submarine could stay on station for 77 days, while its diesel-electric counterpart could do so for only 11 days, according to one study. Even close to Australia's northwest coast, a nuclear-powered submarine could still patrol 2.5 times longer than a diesel-electric one. In short, nuclear-powered submarines would greatly improve Australia the ability to defend its entire continent. Even so, nuclear-powered submarines presented Australia with three problems. First, they are expensive to design, build, maintain, and operate. They would require specialised personnel, infrastructure, and training facilities that Australia currently does not have. Those inadequacies were well detailed by Australia then Defence Minister in 2017. Second, they would take longer to construct. Without an existing domestic nuclear industry, it would take time for Australia to develop the capacity to produce the necessary components for nuclear reactors. That could delay the introduction of Australia future submarines by as much as a decade. And last, becoming a nuclear power, even one without nuclear weapons, could strain Australia relations with its neighbours, like the Indonesia and the Malaysia.